AI companies just need to stop releasing things. I'm behind as it is. Welcome everybody. Today we're covering a brand new development from Amazon who has released or is about to release, is about to start rolling out Alexa Plus. Can we stop maybe having the whole plus at the end of things? Uh, it reminds me of the early days when people were putting I in front of random words to make it sound cool, which in itself was hearkening back to older days when everybody was putting a lowercase e in front of everything to make it sound cool. Now we're putting a plus on the end of everything. Anyway, Alexa Plus is is finally the thing that I have been waiting for a long time. At least it looks like it. And uh, I've already ordered mine. We'll see uh, how soon it'll roll out. Uh, but I've been waiting for essentially my own Jarvis, someone I can talk to that uses generative AI. So it can talk to me intelligently. I can use it to brainstorm. I can use it to do other things around the house uh, as a hub to for my smart home system, all of that. So let's get into the announcement and any particularly interesting details that I want to highlight. So this is the initial announcement on Amazon's news page, I guess you could call it. Introducing Alexa Plus, the next generation of Alexa. And basically this is everything that Alexa already is, plus it's got all, it's got generative AI baked into it. So it's a much more conversational thing. It sounds like it's got a really interesting voice mode. Assuming the voice mode sounds anything like the demo video that they have. It's not really a demo video, the marketing video that they have. Then it sounds really great. And I hope anything at least close to what ChatGPT's voice mode has. Because the nice thing about ChatGPT's voice mode is that the voice itself can change. You can ask it to read things in a different style to get more dramatic or, uh, or softer or louder or faster or that kind of thing, which you can't do with other voice modes that I've tested. So I'm hoping that this Alexa Plus is smart enough to understand nuances like that. Obviously, we're not going to know until it all rolls out. But anyway, Amazon claims that the Alexa Plus is more conversational, smarter, personalized, and she helps you get things done. She keeps you entertained, helps you learn, keeps you organized, summarizes complex topics, and can converse about virtually anything, uh, which is great. That's, you know, those are all features that we've had from generative AI, but they haven't really been integrated in a good system that works for, like, conversation. So here's all the stuff that Alexa can, well, some of this it can do. It can manage and protect your home, make reservations, help you track, discover, and enjoy new artists. She can also help you search, find, or buy virtually any item online and make useful suggestions based on your interests. It's funny because this is the real reason that Amazon developed Alexa in the first place is they thought it was going to be a huge opportunity to get people to buy things just with their voice. And uh, unfortunately for them, I think it's really just been a way for people to set timers and 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 watch their calendar and stuff like that so even though they say like it can search find and buy virtually any item online i don't think most people are actually using it for this purpose because i think most of us like to like view the thing that we want to buy and approve it and maybe even do research compare and contrast with other things and uh unless it's a kind of item that you buy on repeat which i would set that up as a subscribe and save personally anyway Enough commentary from me. Uh, so it's easy to talk to. Conversations with Alexa Plus feel expen expensive and natural. Whether you're speaking half-formed thoughts, using colloquial expressions, or exploring complex ideas, Alexa Plus understands what you mean and responds like a trusted assistant. We'll see if it can understand my four-year-old daughter. That'll be the real test. It feels like interacting with technology and more like engaging... It feels less like interacting with technology and more like engaging with an insightful friend. I'm sure we're going to get all kinds of people talking about how like this is replacing real human interaction and stuff, uh, which, you know, Facebook's been doing that for two decades now. So we'll see if it actually works in this case. But like there are cases of people using AI for like actual therapy. And my response to that is tentative. I think we need data. Like, does it actually help? Because if it actually helps then I don't really see what the problem is. If it doesn't help and there's data on that, then obviously. But anyway, so we got Alexa Plus turns talk into action. Um, interestingly, I liked this phrase. To achieve this, we created a concept called experts. Groups and systems, capabilities, APIs, and instruction that accomplish specific types of tasks for customers. Uh, so this in the AI world is what is known as a, a group of experts uh, system where and I actually might even be 
uh, mislabeling that a little bit. But it's the idea that you actually have different AI models, multiple models that all specialize in different things. And then they're kind of tied together by a singular AI model of some kind that sort of determines which one should be used in a given situation. That does appear to be what is happening here with Alexa Plus. It's personalized to you, highly personalized. And I know people are going to be getting all kinds of like uh, data security issues and stuff like that. Let me just say that there's no more risk to this than there has been on anything else in the past. There, uh, somewhere here does talk about their prioritizing of security. I don't know exactly how much you want to take that in. I generally have a distrust of these big companies in how they handle my data. And so despite what they say, I'd say it's probably safe, but at the same time, just don't put any sensitive data out there, you guys. Like like most of the things that you put out there, like whether you enjoy banana pancakes or chocolate pancakes, it's not going to matter. Uh, just don't put your social security number uh, in there or anything like that. But it is nice to have some level of personalization. So it knows your behaviors or the things you've bought in the past, the music you tend to listen to, that sort of thing. It's going to be really helpful, I think. This was interesting. So Alexa is there when you want it and fades into the background when you don't. The new Alexa is like having an assistant available to help anytime you want. She's there when you need her, disappears when you don't. Alexa Plus is also proactive when it's important. Like suggesting you start your commute early when there's heavy traffic or telling you a gift you wanted to buy is on sale. That could be interesting. I'm curious to see how well that proactive Alexa works or if it's going to be one of those things that becomes kind of annoying and you want to turn it off. Uh, it can manage your home just like any of the other smart devices. It's everywhere you are. So it could be your home, your office, and increasingly in your car. So there's a mobile app for that. Uh, it has deep knowledge. We've infused cutting edge LLMs with Alexa's vast knowledge base, creating a meaningfully smarter AI assistant that never stops learning. There's more on this in another article that I will uh, touch on. Here's the bit about privacy and security. We built Alexa Plus the same way we do any Amazon product. We set out to create something we think customers will love while also designing it to protect their privacy and security and provide them with transparency and control they expect from Amazon. Transparency and control being the thing we expect from Amazon. Hmm, really? For example, we centralize important information such as your interactions with Alexa Plus and various settings into the Alexa privacy dashboard built on the secure infrastructure of AWS. Alexa Plus brings world-class privacy and security protection to your everyday inf uh, interactions. One thing I do know about AWS is, is, is a pretty secure infrastructure. Okay, this is interesting. They're pricing it at $19.99 per month, but... Uh, you get it free if you're a Prime member, which, if you don't know, is less than $19.99 per month. I won't say the exact price because I think it might vary per region, but this is a classic marketing pricing strategy where the thing that they really want you to do, which is to sign up for Amazon Prime, is made to look like a sweet deal. So they deliberately overprice Alexa Plus if you want just Alexa Plus, which kind of makes getting an Amazon Prime account seem like a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you do that if you get Alexa Plus built in, which on its own saves you money, plus you get all the other things that you get Prime. A classic marketing. Not necessarily something that's important, uh, but I just chuckled when I saw that. I was just like, ah, they know this stuff too. So availability. Uh, unfortunately, this is only rolling out inside of the U.S. for now. It's not rolled out yet, but it will be rolling out to U.S. customers over the next few weeks, it says, during an early access period and subsequent in waves over the coming months. And here it says, we will prioritize Echo Show 8, 10, 15, and 21 device owners in the early access period. If you don't have one of these devices and want to be among the first to experience Alexa, you can buy one now. So I went ahead and bought an Echo Show 8, which is the cheapest one. Uh, I don't have any Amazon devices other than my Kindle. And I actually don't use my Kindle anymore. I actually use a, a Books, Onyx, uh, whatever you call these. Uh, this is a color thing. And I got this one because it has Android on it, which means I can put other apps on here that are not just Kindle. Uh, so that's a side note there. But yeah, this is what I read with now uh, instead of a Kindle, but I still buy all my books on Kindle uh, as well as all my audiobooks from Audible. Uh, who knows, that might change in the future. But other than that, I don't really have any other devices. I don't have any Echo devices or Dots or Shows or any of these things. So I bought my first one, the Echo Show 8, so I could hopefully be part of this early access period. I'm looking forward to this. And just seeing how, it, seeing how it does. And I'll make a follow-up video about this 
um, showing my experience with it. However, there is one other article here that they published uh, called How Amazon Rebuilt Alexa with Generative AI, which gives a little bit more into the technicalities of what's going on here. And it answered one of my big questions, which is what LLMs uh, are they using inside of Alexa Plus? Is it Amazon's own Nova? because uh, they have their own Nova models, or is it Claude? Because uh, Amazon is the biggest investor in Anthropic's Claude, and so it would make sense that Claude would be available inside of Alexa. Uh, so it's one of the reasons I've been waiting, holding out hope that they would integrate Claude into Alexa, because Claude is my favorite of the models. And if you saw my recent video about Claude 3.7, you can see me gush over that <laughs> as well. Uh, so anyway, mentions a number of things, a lot of technicalities, nothing particularly different than what we've seen before, just kind of explaining it a little bit better better like here's a list of services that will be integrated it won't just be these services i'm sure but here's just some examples grubhub yelp uh uber spotify apple music pandora netflix disney plus hulu max etc uh smart home devices from companies like philips hue and uh, roborock and so much more this was an interesting sentence right here. On top of that, we enabled LLMs to not only integrate with APIs, but to string together multiple such calls in a row. That let us capitalize on LLM's natural strength of freeform conversation to be even more useful by handling multifaceted requests. That's an interesting thing here because there's actually multiple things going on here in Alexa. A lot of people think of generative AI and like your iPhone's ability to start a timer as being kind of the same thing because it involves like speaking to it and, and then getting a result. But they're actually kind of two different silos. The one that can actually interact with your apps and things like that is actually not something that generative AI is particularly good at and requires quite a bit of like cross-pollinization to make it work. And so... I imagine what's going on behind the hood is incredibly complex on how they get these generative AI models and all of the agentic things that make uh, all of the apps work and integrating those in a meaningful way. Imagine that's very hard. In fact, we know it's pretty hard because Apple Intelligence tried to do this and basically it failed. Uh, it's, it hasn't been a very strong release of Apple Intelligence for Apple. It hasn't been very good for them. Uh, additionally, Gemini has technically been available inside of Google Home devices for a while, but it is also kind of clunky and not very seamlessly integrated, which is why I have not bought a Google Home before now. Um, but from just the look of things, from what we can tell, these Alexa devices look like they may have solved some of those issues, but we won't really know until we get our hands on some of these products and just see how seamless is that system. They also talk about how they're trying to avoid hallucinations. And one of the interesting things about that is that we partnered with world-class news sources, including the Associate Press, Reuters, the Washington Post, Time, Forbes, Business Insider, Political, USA Today, publications from Condé Nast, Hearst and Vox, and more than 200 additional outlets. I hope they have BBC because that's where I get my news. So Alexa Plus can deliver accurate real-time news and information. This helps build an incredible depth of knowledge for Alexa Plus that never stops learning. So yeah, they're doing stuff to try and prevent hallucinations and make sure it has access to up data. All right, so here is the answer to the question that I wanted. Customers expect Alexis to be fast, yet there's inherent tension when balancing accuracy and speed. To manage that trade-off, we built a sophisticated routing system using state-of-the-art models from Amazon Bedrock, including Amazon Nova and Anthropic Claude, instantly matching each customer request with the best model for the task at hand, balancing all the requirements of a crisp conversational experience. So it looks like they're using both Amazon Nova and Claude, potentially others as well based on the situation at hand. I'm getting the sense, it doesn't really say so here, but I'm getting the sense that we're not going to be able to uh, request that it changes from one to the other. Maybe we could try it out and just say, can you be Amazon or Anthropics Claude now? Uh, can you use this model or that model? It would be great if we have that kind of flexibility, but I kind of doubt it because that's a little above and beyond what the average user is going to be using this stuff for. But anyway, uh, there was a, a number of interesting things in here. I'll make sure to link these down below. Uh, but if this works, and that's a big if, because Apple intelligence has already tried, Google and Gemini have sort of tried, 
nobody's really gotten it down to have a really good conversational device that is also your home system, your smart home system, and could do all of these automated things for you. No one's really cracked that code yet, but I had a sneaking suspicion even before this announcement that Amazon might be the one to crack that code. And if it works, if it works, this is going to be potentially an important moment in the widespread adoption of AI. Once these things are just available in your Alexa, and we've had time to get to, to, get to use that technology for a year or two, I, it is my hope that people that are against generative AI will eventually start to come around to it. Oh, especially once they try just talking to it like they would a junior writing partner and getting ideas for their book and stuff like that. Like, this is one of the best ways to do that. I genuinely believe that writer's block is a thing of the past. There is no excuse for it anymore, uh, especially once we have tools like this making it even more accessible to all of us. So I know this wasn't a video that touched on writing as much, but I've been talking for like literal years now. Like I've, it's been uh, almost two years since I started this channel about how much I just want a Jarvis, right? Someone I can just talk to and bounce ideas off of and uh, that can even do some tasks for me. And this seems to be it, or at least this is the beginning of that. And I'm sure if they manage to knock it out of the park, other companies will follow and we'll see more advancements in this space. As I recorded this video, I saw that GPT-4 0.5 is now uh, being rolled out. And so uh, next week's video or the next video you see after this one will be about that. I really need to talk to these AI companies and tell them to slow down. Uh, because I am already behind on a number of things and I have other topics that I want to talk to you about uh, that I have to hold off and, until I get through some of these news videos. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.